Hi, this is Andrew Park, and this is the uh, next video about using frameworks. Uh, frameworks help you decide what to include when you make that very first email, your first five-minute presentation, your first phone call to somebody, and you have to choose which materials to include and which materials to leave to later. So one framework that you need to know when you're talking to somebody is what is their perspective with regard to LGBTI issues? Why are they interested in it? Uh, and I want to deal with four groups of people. So for some people, it's personal. Either they or somebody in their life is LGBTI and they have a personal connection to people or the issues. Uh, the second group of people are folks that might be concerned with marginalizations or exclusions or inequality in general. And maybe they don't have a particular interest in LGBTI, but it fits in with their interest in uh, a broader social justice principle of equality and dignity for minorities. Uh, the third group of people is folks that it's their job. They, you know, don't have anything particular uh, to connect them to LGBTI issues, but their boss says, here you go, you've got to do these things that relate to LGBTI people and issues in our organization. And the fourth is that uh, some people see LGBTI people or issues as a resource. Uh, so they see LGBTI people or issues as a source of political credibility, as a source of money or access or um, you know, positioning. And really, we know that some organizations do commodify LGBTI issues and do engage in pinkwashing or, you know, applying for a grant because they think LGBTI issues are um, a hot funding thing. Um, and, um, you know, I'm not going to criticize, or at least not in this video, those, those positions. Uh, it doesn't help. It just, the main thing we need to know is where are people coming from? And our job as advocates is to uh, convince them to change their position to something that we want. And so um, rather than criticize those folks, I'm just going to kind of recognize that they exist and figure out how do you um, work with that. So here's what I think you should do with these different groups. Um, if it's personal, if you know somebody has a personal connection, then send to them of all your materials the conclusion and the findings and the call to action. The call to action may be an inappropriate or too political thing for other groups, but if, they, if it's personal for them, uh, then they will be able to easily incorporate a call to action um, into where they see your issue. Um, if it's people that are concerned with all marginalization, so this is somebody that you're meeting with and it's in the gender department and LGBTI issues is stuck in the gender um, program, or if it's a general uh, department dealing with <clears throat> minorities and refugees, etc. Again, give them the conclusion. Uh, I would give them the theory story because the theory story describes how this issue fits into a person's life, and that's part of how they see the world, and give them the comparable non-LGBTI data so that they can see, okay, LGBTI people are uh, uh, excluded and face disparities in the same way that other people with other kinds of minority characteristics may face disparities. Now, the third group of people I think is the most interesting. This is a group of people that ordinarily wouldn't be working on LGBTI issues, but for some reason, it's now part of their job. And even though these are people who have the least personal connection to the issue, these are people where data can be used from an advocacy perspective to create the most change. Consider for them not being an advocate and stepping outside of your advocacy role and being for them a general neutral reference on all LGBT issues, all LGBT questions that they might have. If you're an advocate, that means that that person who has been assigned by uh, uh, their boss to do LGBTI issue, they see you as somebody that they can go to on the issue on which you're advocating. That's a very limited role for you. 
you have the opportunity for a bigger role because they need people to fill in their gaps in knowledge. So I would consider saying to them, look, if you need me to look at reports you're giving to your boss to make sure that you're saying something uh, that sounds correct, if you need opinions on other issues in the community, uh, come to me. I'll give you the data from our research project, but I'll also uh, have data that you know I've gotten from other places, and, and I know organizations, and I'll be a confidential resource for you. What you want is to get yourself in the position so that when they have a question about LGBTI issues in general, you're the one that they call. And believe me, you might not be as strong an advocate on your issue, but you will have much more influence with that person if you are seen as a reliable, credible source of information, kind of a librarian, kind of a reality check that they can use to be able to accomplish their job. And ask them, what is your job? What kind of reports do you have to uh, fill in for your boss? What kind of information do you need? How can I get that for you? Become their best uh, research friend. <clears throat> so, um, for LGBT, uh, uh, for people that see LGBT folks as a resource, uh, basically you've got to find out more about them and find out um, what they want um, and see if you can give it to them uh, uh, and see if your, your data can satisfy th whatever they're perceiving as their need for um, LGBTI connections. All right, so that's uh, the videos on frameworks. Uh, thank you very much.